All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation x to the power of x to the power of 3 is equal to 729. So to solve this, what I'm first going to do is take the power of 3 on both sides. So I get x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. Now, m times n, I can also rewrite as n times m. And if something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n, then a to the power of n times m should also equal to a to the power of n to the power of n. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So now from here, I have x to the power of x to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And I can think of x to the power of 3 as m and 3 as n. So if I switch the places of these two, I get x to the power of 3 to the power of x to the power of 3. And remember, this is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, from here, I'm going to let x to the power of 3 equal to the variable y. So I get y to the power of y is equal to 729 to the power of 3. Now, I can simplify 729 to the power of 3. So 729 is the same thing as, so 729, let's find some factors of this. So a factor of 729, let's try to divide this by 3. 729 divided by 3, we have 2 over here, so we get 6. We subtract 7 with 6, we get 1, we bring that to 2. 3 times 4 is 12, and now we bring the 9, 3 times 3 is 9. So I get 729 is equal to 243 times 3. Now, 243, if I divide this by 3, I get 81. So I have this times 3 times 81, or sorry, I have 3 times 3 times 81, and 81 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 4. So I have 3 times 3 times 3 to the power of 4, which is equal to 3 to the power of 6, meaning 729 is the same thing as 3 to the power of 6. And 3 to the power of 6 I can break that down into 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared, which is equal to 9 to the power of 3. So I'm going to replace 9 to the power of 3 with 729. So I get y to the power of y is equal to 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3. And the reason I did this is because 3 to the power, 9 to the power of 3 to the power of 3 is the same thing as 9 to the power of 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 is 9, so I get y to the power of y is equal to 9 to the power of 9. And now I can use the property a to the power of a is equal to, if a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a equals b. So in this case, y is equal to 9. Now, recall how I let x to the power of 3 equal to y, meaning I get x to the power of 3 is equal to 9. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the cube root on both sides. So I get the cube root of x to the power of 3 is equal to the cube root of 9. Now the cube root of x to the power of 3 is simply just x. So I get x is equal to the cube root of 9. And this is the same thing as 9 to the power of 1 third.
All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is equal to three. So as you guys probably already know, pi is an irrational number, meaning it doesn't have a whole number value and it's actually equal to 3.14159 and on and on so forth forever. So that's why it's an irrational number. It's to just don't stop going. So in this video, I'm gonna be proving to you guys that pi is actually equal to three and not the irrational number that we all know it is. So what I'm first gonna do is start with the statement x is equal to pi plus three over two. So all I'm doing is I'm giving a value to a variable which is completely illegal, which is completely legal. So now what I'm gonna do is multiply both sides by two. So I get two times X is equal to pi plus three over two times two. Now two times X is equal to two X. So I get two X is equal to, these two twos cancel out, pi plus three. So I get 2x is equal to pi plus 3. And now from here, I'm going to multiply both sides by pi minus 3. So I have pi minus 3 times 2x is equal to pi plus 3 times pi minus 3. Now, pi plus 3 times pi minus 3 I'm going to distribute the pi so I get pi squared plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, which they just simply cancel out, plus 3 pi minus 3 pi, these two cancel out, and then I have minus 9 at the end. So this is, I can just say this is pi squared minus 9, and for my left hand side, I can distribute the 2x so I get 2x pi minus 6x. And now from here, I'm going to add x squared on both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x pi minus 6x is equal to pi squared minus 9 plus x squared. And let me just reorder this real quick. I'm gonna write this as x squared minus six x plus nine, so I'm gonna add nine on both sides, is equal to x squared minus two pi x, so I'm gonna subtract two pi x on both sides. And at the end, plus pi squared. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared. And now x squared minus 6x plus 9, this factors out into x minus 3 squared. And x squared minus 2 pi x plus pi squared is the same thing as x minus pi squared. So I have x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus pi squared. And now, I want to cancel these two squares, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides. So now the square root of x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3, and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus pi. So I get x minus 3 is equal to x minus pi. So now I'm going to cancel these two x's out by subtracting x on both sides. So now I get negative 3 is equal to negative pi, and now if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get pi is equal to 3. So there you have it. I just proved that pi is equal to 3. So now where did I go wrong? Because obviously we know that pi is not equal to 3. So where did I go wrong? Well, I actually went wrong on this step right here where I said that the square root of x minus 3 squared and the square root of x minus pi squared is equal to x minus 3 and x minus pi respectively. Well, this is actually not true. 
the square root of x minus 3 squared isn't equal to x minus 3, is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And same goes with the square root of x minus pi squared. It's not equal to x minus pi. It's equal to the absolute value of x minus pi. So the reason this is so important is because now I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi. Or also negative x minus 3 is equal to positive x minus pi, since we're taking the absolute value of these two. So if we want to solve x minus 3 is equal to negative x minus pi, we're going to have to first distribute the negative sign. So I get x minus 3 is equal to negative x plus pi. So now if I add x on both sides, these two cancel out. So I get 2x is equal to 3 plus pi. And x is equal to 3 plus pi over 2, which going back is what we started with. So there you have it. That is something really important to know that the absolute value is, or sorry, the square root of a square isn't just the normal version, it's the absolute value of that.